Hello everyone and welcome back to the Design Tech series. We're here in the living room when all the magic happens. Last week we talked about batch producing product photography for e-commerce. This week I'm going to talk about batch editing the photos for e-commerce and product photography in a simple automated way so you don't waste hours and hours going through each of the sets individually because that can be time consuming and who has so much time to waste. As I said, this is not the style of photography that you need to go all artistic in. This is a style of photography that has to be simple, elegant, on a white background, preferably. Let's get started. For the purpose of this video, I will be using Adobe Lightroom and explaining how this program functions. As most programs go, uh, first thing you need to do is import photos and videos Select your location of your library, like where you download or placed your uh, files, in this case the images you downloaded, and then click Import. As you can see, I've already done this process. Then you have two sections, the library and the develop. These two will help you select the photos. First function is the library, that I like to uh, select all the photos and give them a star rating. This will help us select only the photos we choose to edit, at the end of the selection process. After that, from the filter uh, selection option, you select filter rated, and you can choose between one or five stars. In this case, I have assigned five stars to all of them. So now only the starred pictures will show up. The next step is to double click on one of the images and go to develop mode to begin the process and begin the editing that we were talking about. Once you have done the changes, like white balance, filters, and so on, you right-click on the photo, Developer Settings, Copy Settings, Copy. By selecting multiple items, you can go again, right-click, Developer Settings, Paste Settings. So now all these uh, settings have been transferred to the selected Applied to Photos. Cropping is a process that unfortunately you have to do manual for for each photo. This occurs because you probably haven't paid enough attention when you photograph the product. If you would have photographed in a perfect framing and paid attention to this uh, detail, then you wouldn't have had to do this process right now. For example, this photo was out of focus, that's why it wasn't rated. If you decide to delete a photo, it will ask you if you want to remove it just from the library or also from your hard disk. I recommend removing from your hard disk also so you take away the space requirements. Another thing is the spot removal tool. This will help you remove and duplicate spots like uh, dust residue that can appear on camera, especially when taking such fine details. This is why I highlighted in my la last video the importance of clearing the dust before you start a photo shoot. Again, this is an example on how problems can occur and which of these aspects are time consuming. So imagine this doing for about 200 photos, it can be problematic. So make sure your workspace is clean so you don't have to do this process over and over again.
after cropping, editing and copying presets, setting your views, all you have to do left is export this whole batch. So if you control A, file, export, it will take you to this very interesting menu where you have the option to choose your folder, resize, add then change metadata, put a watermark, copyrights and things like that. You choose the folder you want to put it in and then you simply export. I've chosen this resolution because this is optimal for uploading on my website or different social media platforms. Here you can choose which type of information you can add and metadata and so on. But we'll go over those settings in another post and how to sort of set up these uh, informations that gets embedded into your photos before you spread them out on the internet. And now you will notice how fast it is to export 65 photos at once. As soon as I will move the screen, you will notice that the photos keep updating and popping up. And voila! These were some of the tips and tricks I had to show for today. Next time I'm going to go over on how to create an Insta layout. And the week after that, we're going to go into how to automate your posts. The idea with this blog is to create a collection of tips and tricks to give you an idea what you need to be looking for. I know there are much more elaborate and target specific videos out there that can teach you in under three minutes what you need, a specific function that you need to learn into, into doing these type of techniques. What I'm trying to do with this video is to show you what you need to look for, things that you might not be aware that exists and how I go about my workflow and the process behind it. Thank you all for joining me today in the living room. See you next time.